Good day everyone. So I am Isamara Eleanor Yes, the first reporter in our group. So I will tackle about the definition, scope, application, and development of genetics and forest genetics. So the lesson objectives, at the end of the lesson, you are expected to describe genetics, distinguish its scopes, application, and developments, and last is reflect by submitting learned insights about the lessons. Genetics was derived from the Greek word gene, meaning to become or to grow into something. The term was coined by William Battison in 1906. He is a British biologist who founded and named the science of genetics and host experiments provided evidence basic to the modern understanding of heredity. And the father of genetics is Gregor Mendel. And also, genetics is the science of genes and how traits are passed one from one generation to the next. And people who study genes are geneticists. And living thing has they in a. Genetics is the science of heredity and variation. In biology, heredity refers the passing of genetic factors from parents to offspring, while variation, it refers to an individual with characteristics different from the others of the same kind. And genetics defined by the Atlas of Genetics and Cytogenetics Genetics in oncology and hematology are the study of the patterns of inheritance of specific traits. And let's proceed to the scope of genetics. First is transmission genetic. This pertains to the study of trans transmission of genetic material from one generation to the other. And it's as actually a misnomer because all genetics deals with inherited or transmitted properties of organisms. And in case there is no transmission, there is no genetics. The term has been used to identify those aspects of genetics that deal only with the transmission of genes and chromosomes from parents to offsprings. Second is molecular and biochemical genetics. This comprises the study of the structure and function of genes. So molecular is a scientific discipline concerned with the structure and function of genes at the molecular level and it includes the technique of genetic engineering. And biochemical is a combination of biochemistry and genetics. Biochemistry deals largely with structure and function of cellular components such as proteins, carbohydrates, and other bio biomolecules and of their functions and transformation during life processes. Third is population and biometrical genetics, involving the study of the behavior and effects of genes in population, often using mathematical models. So the science concerned with the inheritance of quantitative traits, the statistical analysis of the inheritance of different phenotypes or physical characteristics as relates to a pl plant or animal bleeding. So here's the following applications of genetics. First is flora and fauna improvement in medicine use, genetic counseling, genetic engineering or coding, and legal implications, and systematics and others. And let's continue to developmental and several branches of genetics. First is plant genetics. Plant genetic resources provide opportunity for plant breeders to develop a new improved cultivars with desirable characteristics. Second, animal genetics. Animal genetics is the study of genes. Gene genes impact the performances of animal and are passed on from parents to offspring. Third, microbial genetics. The genetics of microorganisms, the viruses, bacteria, and cellular plants and animals. Microbial genetics has played a unique role in developing the fields of molecular and cell biology. Fourth is human genetics, the study of heredity of human traits and human disorders and connection of human genetic disorders. Genes are the common factor of the qualities of most human inherited traits. Study of human genetics can answer questions about human nature, can help understand diseases and development of effective treatment, and help us to understand the genetics of human life. And also the viral genetics. The genetics of viruses and the study of the mechanisms of heritable information in viruses including genome structure, reflection, and genetic chains. Next is fungal genetics, the genetics of fungus. 
Yes, and filament tools from Jai are extensively used as model organisms for eukaryotic genetic research, including cell cycle regulations, chromatin structure, genetic recombination, and gene regulation. And also Drosophila genetics. The genetics of fruit fly Drosophila. A good amount of work has been done on Drosophila and it has yielded many spectacular insights into the field of genetics and hence a separate field for it. Drosophila is an exceptionally useful genetic model used for the study of simple and complex behaviors and its use has an important insight into the molecular, cellular, and evolutionary underpinnings of behavior. And also the Mendelian genetics. It involves the study of the heredity of quantitative monogenic or the single gene and quantitative Polygenic are the two or more gene threats and the influence of environment on their expressions. So why is Mendelian genetics is important? The study of Mendelian inheritance is important for students of childhood development because it provides essential building blocks for understanding more complex patterns of inheritance. And Mendel instead believed that heredity is the result of discrete units of inheritance and every single unit or gene was independent in its actions in individual genome. And the quantitative genetics, it involves the study of the heredity of quantitative traits such as height, weight, and IQ in human beings and milk production in cattle. And then, the Morganian genetics, it includes the study of recombination or crossing over in all kinds of organisms such as higher plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and viruses. It also involves the preparation of linkage map of chromosomes. Good day everyone, my name is Ayrami Polina from BSF3A. So today I will discuss the continuation of our report. So number 11, Non-Mendelian Genetics. It involves a study of the role of cytoplasm and its organelles in heredity. According to Mendel's law, um, Non-Mendelian genetics is any part of inheritance in which traits do not segregate in accordance. And this law describes the inheritance of traits linked to single genes on chromosomes in the nucleus. In Mendelian genetics, each parent contributes one of two possible alleles of traits. There are types of non-Mendelian genetics. First is incomplete dominance, codominance, polygenic traits, and epistasis. Number 12 is mutation genetics. They involve the study of heredity of both chromosomal changes and gene mutation. The mutation genetics is any changes in the DNA sequence of a cell. Mutation may be caused by mistake during cell division or they be caused by exposure to DNA damaging agent in the environment. Mutation can be harmful, beneficial, or have no effect. Number 13. Cytogenetics, it provides cytological explanations of different genetical principles. Cytogenetics is essentially a branch of genetics, but it also a part of cell biology or cytology that is concerned with how the chromosomes relate to cell behavior, particularly to their behavior during mitosis and meiosis. Cytogenetics also is a branch of biology focused on the study of chromosomes and their inheritance, especially as applied to medical genetics. Number 14, molecular genetics. It includes the study of the structure and function of genes and the regulation of their activity. 
Molecular genetics is also a subfield of biology that addresses how differences in the structures or expression of DNA molecules manifest as variation among organisms. Number 15. Transmission genetics. It includes the study of the mode of gene transmission from generation to generation. The kind of studies that Mendels perform are now included in the disciplines of transmission genetics. The transmission genetics is the mechanism that drives evolution. DNA encodes all the information necessary to make an organism. Every one organism DNA is made of the same basic parts, arranged in different orders. DNA is divided into chromosomes or group of genes which code for proteins. There are types of transmission genetics. Autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive, and mitochondrial. Number 16. Clinical genetics. Genetic is involved in the detection of causes of diseases such as hemoplaya, color blindness, diabetes, and phenylketonuria. Clinical genetics, the study of the causes and inheritance of genetics disorder, in addition to the diseases mentioned under the biochemical genetics. Other aspects of clinical genetics include the study of chromosomal aberrations such as those that cause mental retardation and Down syndrome, and immunogenetics or the genetic aspect of the immune response, and the transmission of genetic factors from generation to generation. Number 17. Forward genetics and reverse genetics. The term reverse genetics has been used in the physical mapping and isolation of genes whose protein products are unknown. The term forward genetics has been used genes that are mapped based on the phenotype using the technique of classical genetics. The forward genetics identify and link, links a mutation to an observed disease etiology, while reverse genetics induces mutation in model organism to study their role in disease. Number 18, immunogenetics. It deals with the production of different types of antibodies. The diversity of the antibodies is found to be under the control of genetics regulation. Immunogenetics is the branch of medical immunology and medical genetics that explores the relationships between the immune system and genetics. Autoimmune disease such as type 1 diabetes are complex genetic traits which result from the from defects in the immune system. Number 19 is behavioral genetics. It involves the study of the interaction of genes with the environment to produce a particular patterns of behavior. The behavioral genetic is the study of genetic and environmental influences on behaviors. By examining genetic influence, more information can be gleaned about how the environment operates to affect behavior. Next is Lesson 2, Concept of Genetics. The Cell, Chromosome in Structure, and Cell Division. The animal cells. Animal cells are typical of the eukaryotic cells. 
enclosed by a plasma membrane and containing a membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. The parts of animal cell is perosisam, centrosam, centriol, lysosam, ribosomes, cilium, cell membrane, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, nuclear pore, nucleolus, nucleoplasm, nuclear envelope, rough endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondrion, cytoplasm, secretory vesicles, Golgi apparatus. Those are the parts of animal cell. Plant cell. A plant cell is any type of cell that comes from an organism belonging to the kingdom plantae. The cell is the basic unit of life in all organisms. Like humans and animals, plants are composed of several cells. The plant cell is surrounded by cell, cell wall which is involved in providing shape to the plant cell. Apart from the cell wall, there are other organelles that are associated with different cellular activities. The cell is the basic unit of life in all organisms. Plant cell, like animal cells, are eukaryotic, meaning they have a membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. While animal cell, plant cell have a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane, although often perceived as an inactive product serving mainly mechanical and structural, pur structural purposes. The cell wall actually has a mul multi multitude of functions upon which plant life depends. So, I have here the diagram of a plant cell. Diagram of a plant cell and their... Um, we, we also see that the parts of a plant cell. What are the parts of the plant cell? So, the, here, are some, here are some of the main parts of a plant cell and its function. So, first is the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a gel-like substance with a cell membrane containing water, enzymes, salts, organelles, and various organic molecules. So, cytoplasm in the plant cell aids with the sus suspension of organelles, support of cell internal structure, as well as helps the plant cell maintain its shape. So, ang uh, cytoplasm is more as a gel, kining nasa kilig, kini, kanang violet. Mura siya gel o pag gunit ang gano'n mo siya is mura siya o ma-feel ni mga mura siya o gel. The next is nucleus. Membrane-bound structure that contains the cell hereditary information. So nucleus, the vital function of a nucleus is to store DNA or hereditary information required for, for cell division metabolism and growth so here is the image of nucleus next is the cell membrane a thin thin semi permeable membrane that surrounds the cytoplasm of a cell enclosing its contents so cell membrane cell membrane plays an important role in regulating the entry and exit of the specific substance within the cell. So, dili mag-agi. Kibali, ang cell membrane, dili mo ni siya ang kanang role niya ni is regulating the entry and exit of the specific specific substance within the cell. Kung, kibali, kung na ay substance na musulod or mugawas, dili siya mo agi sa cell membrane. The next is the cell wall. Outer covering of the cell that protects the plant cell and gives it shape. So cell wall, the primary function of cell wall is to be protect and provide structural support to the cell. So mo siya ang nagaprotect sa cell. Mo ni siya sa kaning gawas. 
Then next is the chromosomes. A thread-like structure is made of protein and a single molecule of DNA that serves to carry to genomic information from cell to cell. Chromosomes are the things that make organism what they are. They, they carry all the information used to help a cell grow, thrive, and reproduce. So, ang chromosomes, makita ni mo siya ni, ni siya, makita ni mo ni siya sulod sa nucleus. Dayon, kini siya is, muni ang, nag, ang chromosomes ang naggalaog ka ng information para makatabang sa pag-grow o mag-reproduce sa kanag cell. The next is ribosomes, consist, consisting of RNA and proteins. Ribosomes are responsible for protein assembly. So, ribosomes, they are the smallest member bond organelles, which comprises RNA and protein. They are the sites for protein synthesis. Hence, also referred to as the protein factories of the cell. So, ang ribosomes, muna siyang pinakagamay na organelles na makita ni nato sa plant cell. Dayon, dinha nag, dinha sad, kibali dira nag, dira ang factories sa protein, kibali dira good nag, nag, nag store ang protein dira sa ribosomes din. Ang ribosomes is naa siya dapit sa nucleus makita. Kaning murag na kanang green. The next is mitochondrion. This organelle generate generates energy for the cell. Then mitochondrion, the main function of mitochondrion, mitochondrion in the plant cell is to provide energy through Cellular respiration. Next is the chloroplast. The sites of photosynthesis in the plant cell. They contain chlorophyll, a green pigment that absorbs energy, energy from the sunlight. Then, ang chloroplast, it is an elongated organ organelle enclosed by phospholipid membrane. Chloroplast is shaped like a disc and the and the stroma is the, is the fluid within the chloroplast that comprises a cellular DNA. So, ang, ang kining chloroplast is siya ang, ang nag-absorb o sunlight. Sa tana, siya ang nag-absorb o kanang sunlight. Then, then siya po ang kanang compound prices a circular DNA. Then, sanad is vacuole. A membrane-bound socks within the cytoplasm of a cell that function in several different ways. So, so the function of it, of it is it store nutrients and water in which all ce cell can relay for its survival. They also store the waste from the cell and prevent the cell from contamination. So, ang ihang pong function niya ni is, siya dira po nag-store ang nutrients and water para, ma, para makasurvive po ang kanang cell. The next is the mitosis or somatic cell division. It is a process of nuclear division in eukaryotic cell that occurs when a parent cell divides to produce the identical daughter cell. During cell division, mitosis refers specifically to the separation of the duplicated genetic material carried in the nucleus. So, in the, bio in the cell biology, mitosis is a part of the cell cell cycle in which reflect, reflected chromosomes are separated in, into, into two new nuclei. Cell division by mitosis gives rise to genetically identical cell in which the total number of chromosomes is maintained. Therefore, mitosis is also known as equational division. So, I have here the 
the image of the stages of metastasis and the and cell division so the first stage is the interface the second is tropis they also have a uh, inlaid tropis metapis anapis telopis and cytokinesis then first stage is the interpiece cell grows and develops towards the end the ne doubles so there is a interpiece is present pa ang nuclear membrane chromosomes and nucleus before a dividing cell enters mitosis it undergoes a period of growth called interpiece about 90% of the cell's time in the normal cell Normal cell cycle may be sp spent in an air interface. So there is a interface is there is the money and first stage sa mitosis. Dayon din hinga part is there is sa muagi ang kana ang muagi ang cells. Also about ninety percent of cells ang muagi din hia nga magpundo siya siya sa magpundo sa siya din ha bago siya mo mo add to sa next stage sa mitosis mitosis stage so about 90% ang cells ang mag pundo sa din niya sa interpiece the next is the tropiece chromosomes are visible nuclear membrane disappear nucleus disappear so din niya na sa tropiece ang chromosomes ang nuclear o nucleus is kanang mawala na sila ibalik kung dito sa interface is present pa na sila pag about sa tropis is nawala na sila then during tropis the chromosomes which has been twin and thread like in interface begin to condense or thicken 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 and the and the cell becomes spheroid while the cytoplasm becomes more refractile and vicious and pale so morning morning kuan nga mawala na ang chromosomes ang nucleus ug ang ito, nuclear mawala sila so next is the metapiece chromosomes line up across center spindle fiber attach to center of each chromosomes so during metaphase, the chromosomes are shortest and thickest. Their centromeres of the sister chrom chromatids occupy the plane of the equator, forming a metaphase plate. So, sa during a stage is, ang chromosomes niya is, ay, wait, sa tropis di ay waday na wala ang chromosomes, kundi na visible lang siya. Then, pag abot gear sa metaphase is ang chromosomes line up across the center. So, nibalik na po siya. Wala na siya na visible. Na, hindi, kundi, niglinya na po siya. Ito nga sa cell. Or, another term, Ana, is ka ng equator. Pwede siya matawag equator. Equator ka ng tunga sa cell. O equator of the cell. Spindle fiber attached to center of each chromosomes. So, mauna ang sa metaphase. Naglinya ang mga chromosomes sa equator sa cell. The next is sa cell. The next is anaphase. Chromosomes split. Each half is pulled the opposite side of a cell. So, in anaphase, the paired chromosomes or the sister chromatids separate and begin moving to opposite ends of the cell. Spindle fiber is not connected to chromatids, slighten and elongate the cell. At the end of anapis, each pole contains a complete compilation of chromosomes. So, diri sa anapis is, ng iyang chromosomes is kanang nag-split na sila, kanang wala sila nagkadikit-dikit ba? Na na sila sa both side sa, sa cell. Sa cell, na na sila sa both side. Opposite, kilid by kilid na sila. Pero, kanang nag line, line up gihapon sila kay balik kung nadiri sa picture is orange to orange nag inatubang ay gihapon sila pero nana sila sabay kilid sa cell 
The next is the telophase. Chromosomes cluster in the center of each new cell. Nuclear membrane begins to form. Cells begin to separate. So, as telophase, telophase begins, a complete set of identical chromosomes is located at each pole of the cell. The methodic spindle breaks down and the nuclear membrane begins to form around each set of daughter chromosomes. So, sa telophase is ang iyang chromosomes o ang nuclear membrane nagform na sila but Ang cells niya is kanang nag-separate na, nagbulag na, sil, nagbulag na. Pero ang iyahang nuclear o chromosomes is kanang, uh, ang iyahang, ang, ang chromosomes o nuclear is na-form na siya, but ang cells is nag-separate na. So, so, ang katong sa anaphase na both side o both, katong sa opposite side niya mga, na mga chromosomes pag abot dito sa telophase is nabuo na siya as a cell ang by ang by kilid katong sa telophase by side by sides opposite tapos pag abot sa telophase dito na siya na form og cell the next is the cytokinesis cytoplasm divides two daughter cells form same number of chromosomes as parents so Cytokinesis is the division of the cell cytoplasm. It begins prior to the end of mitosis in anaphase and complete shortly after telopis or, mito or mitosis. At the end of cytokinesis, two genetically identical daughter cells are produced. These are diploid cells with, with each cell containing a full complement of chromosomes. So, diri na na part sa cytokinesis na kanang diri na siya na ang katang cytokinesis pag abot sa cytokinesis nagbulag, murag natunga gani tapos o natunga, na divide siya into two, dahil dito na dahil makabuo o two daughter cells form dira na siya nabuo sa cytokinesis na stage then, same number of chromosomes as parent cell din, ang Ang, ang bawat isa nga kana ang cell is pareha po sila o chromosomes kanang pantay lang sila o chromosomes by cell Good day everybody, this is Cholivic Gato and today I am about to discuss the meiosis and the six cell division So what is meiosis? The meiosis is this is a special type of cell division which have germ cells and sexually reproductions of gamete that produce gametes from the sperm or egg cells and it involves two rounds of divisions which results result in four cells with only one copy of each chromosomes. So why is meiosis important? Meiosis ensures that all organisms produce via sexual reproduction that contain the correct number of chromosomes. It also produces genetic variation the by the way of process or recombinations. So let's talk about sex div cell division. It is a cells that form through a particular kind of cell division called meiosis. The illustration above of meiosis or six di cell division, it shows the cells, which is a part of cytoplasm, and the small circle in is the nucleus, nucleus, and then nucleus, the smallest circle, and that line over there are the chromosomes. The second one is this circle called nuclear membrane and the the two red and blue line are the bevalent and in the outer line which is the aster and the third is that line which is forming x is the crossing over the blue the blue x and the red x the two are when it is combined the two are called tetrad 
the green color there is centriole, centrioles and the small la, uh, line in the circle is a spindle fiber. So, at the onset of meiosis, DNA strands thicken into chromosomes, homologous or like chromosomes begin to approach, approach each other, like in the, um, it is used in the illustration. And the second way is homologous chromosomes pair to form bivalence, the centrioles centriol divide and move to opposite poles of cells. And the third one is the bivalence duplicate to form tetrads or four chromatid groups. The nuclear membrane disintegrates, crossing over or recombination occurs. Then the fourth one is in metaphase one, the tetrads attached to spindle fibers at their centromeres line up at mid cell. So in early anaphase one, in this electron. The illustration there, and a phase one that the threads separate and the bird chromatids moving along spindle to their respective centrioles. So, in late anaphase one, the chromatids have almost reached the spindle poles, the cell membrane begins to constrict. So, in telophase one, nuclear membranes enclose the separate, separated chromatids, the cell membrane completes its constriction the first meiotic division ends there are now two cells it's with the same number of chromatids as the parent cell so in pro prophase 2 begins in the second meiotic division homologous chromatids do not duplicate but merely separate so in metaphase 2 the chromatids line up Mid cell, the centrioles and asters are at the poles as as a spindle has formed. In anaphase two, the now separated chromatics approach their respective poles. The cell membrane begins to construct constrict rather. In telophase second has been completed. There are now four cells, each with half the the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. Good morning everyone, this is my report. Reporter John Mark Kyle L. Epili. So, DNA packaging into chromatin and chromosomes. Certain proteins compact chromosomal DNA into the microscopic space of the eukaryotic nucleus. These proteins are called histones. And the resulting DNA proteins complex is called chromatin. It may seem paradoxical that proteins are added to DNA to make it more contact. <clears throat> so number one, at the simplest level, chromatin is a double-stranded helical structure of DNA. Number two, DNA is complex with histones to form nucleosomes. Number three, each nucleosome consists of eight histones proteins around which the DNA wraps 1.65 times. So number four, a chromatom consists of nucleosome plus the H1 histone. Number five, the nucleosome folds up to produce a 300 fiber. Number six, the form slopes averaging 300 in the length. Number seven, <coughs> The 300 fibers consist are unfold to produce a 25 wide fiber. Number 8. Tight calling of the 250 fiber products, the chromatic of chromosomes. So, this is the picture that we already see the DNA helix. And this is the chromosomes. Super coiled DNA. DNA and histones, chromatin fiber, the DNA double helix. <clears throat> so number one is the DNA is wrapped around special proteins, molecules called histones. Number two, the combined loop of DNA and protein is called a nucleosome. <clears throat> number three, the, the nucleosomes are packaged into a thread 
which is sometimes described as beads on Venus ring. Number four, the end result is a fiber known as chromatin. So this is the process of the DNA packaging. <clears throat> so mitosis versus meiosis. This is their difference and the mitosis is composed of a division and reproduction of most body cells. It starts with one diploid cell and results in two daughter cells. Tetrads cross around over in a propase one and results with some number of chromosomes as parent cell. <clears throat> so in meiosis, it comes both of division and reproduction of sex cells. Starts with diploid cell and result in four haploid cells. Produce gamma gametes. Cells produced are not identical. Two rounds to produce daughter cells. So homologs pairs in propase one. So this is the same similarities. Cell division and reproduction. They are both cell division and reproduction. They're both also sexual. Starts with one parent cell, DNA replication, and that's all. Thank you for listening.